This is Kevin. I've been a dedicated baseball fan for over 25 years. This is my first venture into YouTube video production and topic of discussion is probably an overhyped subject, the Barry Bond story. Is he worthy of Hall of Fame consideration, for instance? Or is his pursuit of Henry Aaron's home run record tainted? Is there evidence? Is there not evidence? There's probably thousands of YouTube videos out there, and I'm just one of those thousands that have my opinions on it. But I'm going to try to make it a little more balanced to where the naysayers and the yaysayers may be able to pick something up from this. He's at 753 home runs now. He's two from tying Henry Aaron and three from passing him. He's in a little bit of a slump right now. And as you can see on ESPN every night, they have full coverage of Barry Bonds, seemingly going 0 for 2 with two walks, 0 for 3 with two walks. And although the coverage is warranted more now, it wasn't early in the season, I don't think, when he was about 20 home runs shy. Um, that's all in due to media and PR. Now you'll notice in a lot of those games where the Giants are on the road, a lot of people boo Barry Bonds when he steps up to the plate, and even the cheers he gets when he hits home runs are either watered down or border on sarcastic. This goes to show me that Bonds has not conducted himself very well in terms of public relations. He may do a lot for the community of San Francisco and their fans. But as far as being an overall ambassador to baseball throughout the country and in Canada, I don't see that impression coming from him. Um, pursuing a record like this, I believe he could be a great ambassador for the sport. But there are times he's reserved, times he'll chirp at the media and give off the bad impression. And that's a shame because we thought 755 was a record that would never be broken, that would stand the test of time. It's going to be broken this, sometime this season. And um, the fan reaction does bother me, but I do point to Bonds as the primary source of that problem. He has created some of the problem on his own. But there's a difference now in the way the media portrays events versus back in the 1920s when Babe Ruth was hitting his home runs and 1961 when Roger Maris was pursuing the single season record and even in 1998 only nine years ago when McGuire and Sosa were seemingly bringing baseball back. In the 1920s media only reported what happened on the field and couldn't possibly care less what happened off the field. Babe Ruth was not an angel. Babe Ruth was, a, Ruth was an alcoholic he was a womanizer. Uh, Hall of Fame broadcaster Ernie Harwell recounted a few stories where Babe Ruth would go to a hotel for a matinee romance, romance and then go to the ballpark and hit home runs. If that happened in 2007, he'd be plastered all over the pages just like Barry Bonds was. 1961, they were not probing Roger Maris's personal life as much as they were uh, showing you his uh, clumps of hair that he was losing back in July and August of that year when he was going through a slump. Keep in mind, he was wearing the very well accepted crew cut haircut of that time and he was losing clumps of hair because he was stressed. He was pressured. Uh, Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, um, the, na the uh, media reaction to them was by and large positive because their exploits came just a couple years after baseball had undergone that 232 day strike and they were double handedly credited for bringing the game of baseball back for having the fans sell out the stadiums again and making it into what it is today. Um, Barry Bonds um, is probably under the same pressure, he's under injuries as well he's under scrutiny from media, constant uh, views over on ESPN, but again the media these days has changed compared to those other times. It's now more a sensationalistic type media where people want to know what happened, people want to know the big headline, people want to know the big rumor. Now not everybody wants to, but publishers, um, editors are looking for the juice in the story. They're looking for what will sell newspapers, what will sell airtime 
What did Brittany do this week? Oh, nothing as much as what Lindsay did last week. So, you see the tabloids out there that are just tripping over themselves trying to find the big story. So, with the overhype come possibly false expectations. And it's being, you know, unfairly heaped on Barry Bonds. When in fact you should just be able to let him go out there and do his job, which is trying to break Henry Aaron's home run record. And people always say steroids, steroids. No one has yet been guilty of actual steroids. There's been a lot of finger pointing. There's been a couple people that have refused to appear on Senator Mitchell's congressional hearings. Palmero and McGuire among them. They're very tight-lipped. Jason Giambi is another example. So, you take a look at Barry Bonds' 1987 rookie card with Pittsburgh. Compare it to a modern-day San Francisco Giants um, baseball card. You bring out the tape measures, you'll see Barry Bonds' head is swelled in size. His body is swelled in size. His muscles aren't at all like they were, even back when he started with San Francisco in 93 or 94. But that doesn't necessarily mean steroids. Do steroids take a toll on hand-eye coordination or bat speed? If there is a proof of that happening, I'd like to know and I'll make a rebuttal video. But Bond still possesses, I think, the best hand-eye coordination in the game. All those intentional walks aside, and still one of the most dangerous bats in terms of bat speed that you'll ever see out there because he can still hit him into McCovey Cove, Cove with a snap of a finger. Conditioning is the key here. If you overlook the steroids, look at the conditioning. Barry Bonds is in better shape now than Roger Maris and Babe Ruth were during their time. We are in an unprecedented age in baseball where calisthenics, running, weightlifting, and other heavy-duty exercises are the norm for all baseball players. Did you ever hear of a shortstop hitting 40 home runs before A-Rod came in? No. There wasn't that much emphasis placed on the weightlifting and body maintenance back in the 1920s. And even by that regard, Babe Ruth's weight training regimen was virtually non-existent. You could call his body a mixture of Budweiser and mashed potatoes. Nobody ever saw him lifting weights. Nobody ever claimed they did. His natural ability gave him that 714 home runs. Roger Maris, yes, he was trim. Yes, he was fit. But not as fit as Mickey Mantle. Yet, the natural ability he had that one year gave him those 61 home runs. McGuire and Sosa, yes. They were more about weightlifting. But again, just like Barry Bonds. Bonds was hitting home runs even before people noticed that his body was increasing in size. McGuire, his only problem in his early days with the Oakland Athletics was a bad batting average, 201 in one year. But he was always hitting 30 and 40 home runs. Sosa, when he was in the minor leagues, always was capable of hitting 20 to 30. A lot of that is natural talent geared up with weightlifting. Steroids doesn't necessarily have anything to do with it. We'll find out. Does Bonds deserve a place in the Hall of Fame if the steroid issue becomes real? That I'm not sure. As of this moment, I believe he does have deserve every chance to be in the Hall of Fame. You're innocent in this country until you're proven guilty. We look at Shoeless Joe Jackson and the Black Sox scandal. We look at Pete Rose and his betting on baseball. They have been proven guilty. Pete Rose is almost proud of what he does. He sells books on it. He has a prima donna attitude. Yes, recognizes 4,256 hits. But if you don't want to put him in the Hall of Fame, you don't have to. But Bonds is not guilty. Giambi and none of them are guilty. So he's very Hall worthy. And I do think that he should get you know, good mention as one of the best players of all time. He could stand an upgrade in the PR department, but also remember this. Steve Carlton pitched for the Philadelphia Phillies in the late 60s. He got ticked off with a media writer and didn't speak to the media for 15 whole years afterwards until his career began going downhill. But with the emphasis off him, he ended up with 340 wins and was a first ballot inductee into the Hall of Fame. 
So maybe the media should just let Bonds do his thing and not overemphasize what he's doing and what he's not doing like you see in these tabloids. And then just let time and investigations take care of themselves. Better PR is needed? Yes. Better cooperation with Congress? Absolutely. But until then, we should revert our thinking to 1998 for at least a few days. McGuire and Sosa did provide one hell of a contest to get to that home run record there. And it did put a lot of fans in the seats. This may be something we don't see again. Bonds could go to 800 home runs. We should just appreciate the moment for what it is. And then read the fine print later.